Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Sweden and we're going to return to a brewery that has featured on the channel many a time before. I've had some really nice beers from these guys over the years and this one is one of the latest installments from one of my favourite series of beers that they've been doing of late. So we're going to head up to Helsingborg in the northwest corner of the county today and we're having a look at another beer from Brewski Microbrewery. So this one is the Almond Walnut Vanilla Caramel Cake. It comes in at 10% ABV. It's an Imperial Pastry Stout and this one is supposed to be pretty good actually. So this one is a member of their cake series which is the Imperial Stout series that they have. Um, they've released maybe four or five different beers in this series now and I think this is the third one that I've reviewed for you here on the channel, come to think of it. Um, I can't remember whether this beer was released as part of the December 2020 or the January 2021 uh, Local Alice but I do have another one uh, from these guys as well, which is like a is licorice something, and you'll see me review that in a little while. But uh, very curious to see how this one turns out. As I say, I've enjoyed the cake series over the last little while, and I would also recommend that you check out the uh, pie series, which is the series of kind of... Um, I don't know if you can call them pastry sours right enough, but the sweet uh, Valina Vices, those are very, very good as well. But this brewery really made its name for the kind of hazy New Englands and the big fruity IPAs, their Fever series is very very good in my experience um, but yeah recently they've been diversifying a little bit more uh, as to what they're kind of brewing and things which is great so yeah definitely a, a Swedish brewery that I would recommend that you check out and I think it's maybe fair to say that these guys are probably the best known brewery in Skåne actually these guys have been around for quite a little while but uh, yeah definitely one that I would recommend if you're interested in Swedish beer try some of their IPAs have a go at some of these big sweet imperial stouts and the Bellina Vices in the, the pie series are definitely worth looking at as well. So um, yeah, let's see how we get on with this one. Always nice to review some new beers from Brewski Microbrewery. So yeah, as always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Brewski Microbrewery before, and you will no doubt see more added to that list in the near future but there's all the usual social media down there if you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state county province prefecture whatever it is you're interested in do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there for all the swedish beers i've reviewed for you that's constantly being added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated so anyway to tell you a little bit about brewski microbrewery then on to my brewery notes so as i've mentioned to you already brewski microbrewery were are based in helsingborg in skona here in the south of sweden and the company was founded back in 2014. the main men behind the company are marcus hjalmarsson johan britson alfred olsen and robin skoglund and all of these guys were inspired to start their own brewery having tried the west coast american craft beers but marcus was originally associated with the high nose brand of beer brewed at the Huginess Brewery out in the Kulaberry Peninsula to the northwest again of uh, Helsingborg. And some of those high nose beers are still brewed there, but all of the Brewski beers are now brewed at their own brewery in Helsingborg, having previously been brewed up there for a little while. And uh, the Helsingborg brewery in the old train yard to the south of the station has a capacity to brew around 100,000 litres of beer per month. In 2016, they also started their own beer festival called Brewski Val, which had over 40 different breweries in the first year, and that's expanded year on year. Unfortunately, in 2020, it was cancelled due to the COVID-19 pandemic, but I've been there in 2017. 2018 and 2019 and like I say it's got bigger year on year one of the best beer festivals in Scandinavia in my opinion and I would recommend that you try that out actually um, but they also used to open up their brewery once a month as a bar which was called Barsky and they now have their own bar in Helsingborg which goes by the same name and that opened back in 2018 there's some really nice uh, ramen there it's not authentic Japanese ramen it's an American chef that works in there and um, so there's like chicken ramen and things like that and it's good 
Um, but yeah, like I say, not fully authentic Japanese ramen. Uh, but these days, Brewski are also brewing some of their beers at Tampa Bay Brewing Company in Florida, mainly their IPAs, and they're also looking to open up a bar in Oslo, from what I understand. Marcus actually has a distribution company up there called Beerski, which is importing Swedish beers into Norway for different bars and things like that. I'm not sure if they are. Uh, getting things into Vinmanopoli at the moment, which is basically the Norwegian equivalent of uh, of Sistembolaget. But uh, yeah, it is quite cool that some of the Swedish beers are getting up to Norway. I do hope that he brings some of the other stuff uh, back down the other way, actually. It would be awesome to see a few more Norwegian beers coming through um, Sweden, actually, because we only get a very small number of breweries, actually, come to think of it. Um, but over the over 2019, these guys brewed around 500,000 litres of beer in total, and as of February 2021, when I'm reviewing this beer for you, they've produced in the region of 325 different kinds of beer, which is pretty impressive. But like I say, these guys are a very, very well-respected Skånsk brewery, and uh, I think they probably are the best-known brewery from Skåne these days. You know, Nerd Brewing and Hooley Brewery are getting bigger and bigger. Uh, Remerlöv are producing more and more stuff as well come to think of it and Malmö Brewing Company have always been very respected but they're they're a brew pub basically so um yeah interesting company these guys and um I think these they could well have been one of the first uh, scones breweries to actually export their beer I know that Davor down in Slovenia has been able to get a hold of some of these and I've seen uh, the Brewski beers in Greece and uh, I think actually out in Hong Kong I saw some of them as well the other big brewery here in Skåne would be um would be oh it's got the name's gone right out of my head now that's that's terrible um Brickeriet, that's it, Brickeriet from Landskrona. So, um, yeah, that those guys would be the other big scones brewery. But, um, yeah, as I say, that's all I can really tell you about uh, Brewski for the moment. If you want to learn more about these guys, you can check out the brewery website, you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram, and you can uh, to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can, of course, check out the Rate Beer, Untapped, and Beer Advocate pages to learn more about all those different beers that we mentioned. So, um, yeah, let's get on and actually have a taste of this beer then. I'll just let you have a, have a little look at the art work on this one before we open it up. As you can see it is very similar to the artwork that we've seen before from this cake series. Um, I actually can't remember when I last reviewed one of the cake series. I think I've only, I think they've released as I say like four or five and I think this is maybe the third one that I've reviewed for you here on the channel. Um, but yeah always some nice beers in this series. 330 milliliter can. I think I paid like 45 or 50 Swedish kroners for this one so let's assume 50. Um, so about five euros for the can, um, about five dollars fifty American, and that will be, you know, four pounds fifty. Uh, yeah, maybe about four pounds fifty uh, pounds sterling. So yeah, let's get this guy out then, and we'll get on with the tasting. But um, the beers within this cake series can vary. The licorice one that I'm going to review for you a little bit later, I believe that's a twelve percenter. This one is a ten percenter. So yeah. This should be um, quite nice, actually. Um, so, yeah. There we are. Um, I tell you something, you can smell the almonds and the vanilla off this as soon as you open the beer up. Um, very, very big pastry stout, this one. Um, yeah, so, as you can see and as you would expect, this beer has poured a lovely dark ebony rosewood colour. The beer, um, you can see that it's got a little bit of haze to it. Let me just check. I'm betting this one will have oats and everything in it. Um, yeah, it's got oats and uh, yeah, almond in it. I didn't know that you call it almond mandel in Swedish. But yeah, no, it's just, it's got oats. This is, yeah, it's an oat stout, this one. A lot of oats and oatmeal and stuff in this one, I would guess. Um, no wheat though, which is interesting. But yeah, as you can see, this beer's put a lovely dark kind of ebony rosewood colour. Which is what you would expect from an Imperial Stout, absolutely. Um, but uh, yeah, it looks great. If we shine the light through this, you can see there is a little bit of a kind of Coca-Cola coloured edge to it. But you can see this beer is pretty damn hazy. And it's when it's got a lot of oats in it, that's, you know, not surprising, to be honest with you. So, um, yeah, it looks very, very nice, I have to say. I like how this one, I do like how this one uh, goes together in that sense. So, um, yeah, nothing overly surprising about this beer in terms of its appearance. You could see that when we poured it, it had about a one-third finger of a frothy, I would say medium tan head, one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few little ones going up towards the bottom of the head there, but I mean, overall, it did look pretty nice. So, um, yeah, 
just you can see as you would expect when it's a bit higher alcohol that head has just faded away to be nothing and there's a wee bit of a kind of thin foamy edge around the edge of the glass there but uh, overall it does look pretty nice so uh yeah let's take a closer look at the aroma then and see how we get on nothing surprising about the appearance of this beer absolutely oh it does smell pretty nice it does smell very very nice um so yeah straight away with this beer you can smell that sort of pastry cakey sort of base to the beer which is kind of what you'd expect this one does actually smell a little bit more kind of almost dusty if that makes sense compared to some of the other ones that i've had from the, the series before it doesn't quite come across as um being so oily and, and and brown sugary if that makes sense so yeah this one definitely has a wee more of that kind of pastry edge to it um but it does smell you know very very nice absolutely so yeah, it smells really, in the malt base, it smells like really spongy and cakey, like a kind of chocolate sponge, something like that. Um, definitely you can get a wee bit of the kind of dusty pastry sort of thing, absolutely. Um, icing sugar a little bit, definitely. Um, but yeah, you know, you get some really nice kind of nutty qualities out of this one. You can smell the almonds right away. You can smell the big kind of sweet and round and oily vanilla, actually. So yeah, the... Um, the way that everything goes together in this malt base is um, it's really nice. I mean, there's nothing overly kind of surprising about this one. There's a lot of kind of brown sugar in here as well. You can smell there is a little bit of that darker treacle molasses, but the caramel actually comes across as quite bright and, um, you know, really quite sweet in a sense. Sometimes the brown sugars, of course, can be really ca highly caramelised. And um, sometimes, yeah, they can be really highly caramelised. And... Um, and very sweet in a sense but yeah for me um yeah if they're highly caramelized they're a bit kind of more dark and oily but this one really has a very nice um sweetness to it actually the 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 aroma profile of this beer i think goes together um it goes together very very nicely um the it's it's everything you kind of expect to be honest with you there's nothing really surprising about uh, this beer in terms of its aroma i'm just trying to figure out does this one actually have hops in it uh, it, well, it doesn't actually it contains barley oats almonds and walnuts so yeah this one um although it's weird because it does say in the other languages it does say in the other languages lupulo hmm. so um yeah but in sweet in swedish it doesn't say um it doesn't say humlet and in english it doesn't say hops but in italian it says uh, lupulo and then um, in some of the other languages, in German it says Hopfen as well. That's really strange, so I'm not sure whether this beer has hops in it because the thing that I'm thinking from the aroma is that it doesn't really have, it doesn't seem to have much of a kind of green component, to be honest with you. That's the first thing that comes into mind. Um, I mean, it does, um, it's... You do get, you know, you get little hints of a wee bit of earthiness. You get little hints of a wee tiny floral note and a bit of lighter grassiness. But to me, the hops, uh, there's not really an obvious hoppy component to this beer. So that's really interesting. And I know that Brewski, when it comes to the, the pie series, um, they don't put hops in these quite often, actually. Um, and I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, some of the Vault City beers from back home in Scotland, they always put hops in them. And I think it just adds an extra layer of depth to the beer. So this is interesting if this is an Imperial Stout that doesn't have hops in it. But I'm a bit confused as to why it says it's got hops in some languages, Italian, but then in, you know, Italian and German. But then in English and Swedish, it's saying nothing about hops. So that's a wee bit unusual. Maybe they need to check their labels, actually. Um, but, um, yeah... Um, yeah, you do get a wee bit of grassiness, you get a wee bit of floral character as well, and a wee bit of earthiness, but it's quite, it really is, because of how powerful the kind of malty side of this beer is, um, and the adjuncty side of the beer, because I'm guessing this will probably have been done with, like, flavour essences and stuff as well, um, you know, because um, it does have that really kind of rounded candy sort of vibe to it, um, you know, um, I'm guessing that this one will have, um, as they say, it will have a wee bit of um it will have been done with the flavor essences and things but because of how powerful the malty and adjuncty side of this beer is it's quite difficult to detect any kind of hoppy character out of it to be honest with you on the fruity side of things though um you know it's kind of what you would expect there's a wee bit of a kind of light figgy quality to it it's got a wee bit of black currant wee bit of a kind of rounder and sharper blackberry 
Um, yeah, that's kind of exactly what you would expect. So yeah, it's a really interesting, um, it's a really interesting kind of combination of things going on here. Um, so yeah, take a little bit of time and just enjoy the aroma of this beer. It really does, you know, when they say it's a pastry stout, this one really is. It's a very much a cake stout, to be honest with you. Very much a cakey and pastry stout, this. So take a wee bit of time to kind of ponder over the aroma of this one, but let's have a taste of it then. So this one is the Almond Walnut Vanilla uh, Caramel Cake, coming in at 10% ABV. One of the Cake Series beers from Brewski Microbreggery in Helsingborg here in Skåne in the very south of Sweden. Very curious about this one. Let's get stuck in. Slange, skull, cheers. Um, yeah, that's quite interesting. It's not quite as sweet as I was expecting, actually. Yeah, that's that's interesting for sure. Um, that is is it's. I was expecting like a really you know big sweet kind of you know like really sweet, really oaty, almost creamy imperial stout out of this one. But this one's got a wee bit more of a kind of dryness and sort of bitterness to it actually. So maybe the pastry stouts that I've come across before have just been really very very sweet and very very candied. Um, but yeah, this beer, it really has a little bit more kind of dryness and things to it in the um, in the in the malt base and stuff. That wasn't, well, I wasn't sure exactly. In the aroma, you were getting hints of this, but I wasn't sure what to think about this one based on the other one. So this is definitely a bit drier and a bit darker than I remember the beers from this series being uh, previously. So interesting. I'd be curious to see what the licorice one is going to be like, actually. Um, yeah, this is interesting, this beer. This has caught me off guard a little bit because I was expecting just a really big, kind of thick and sweet imperial stout. But yeah, this one, the pastry thing, I noticed this in one of the pastry sours that I had from um, Vault City back home. Uh, the pastry base in these beers is interesting. I'm not, I've not quite decided whether I like the kind of pastry type bases yet. I think if I was going for a kind of pastry stout, I'd rather have a big kind of oaty and smoothie and sort of big sort of oaty smooth and very sweet and creamy one in that sense so I do like how that um, how that side of it goes together um, in terms of the um, but let's just try and break down the flavour of this one then this is this is not what I expected but yeah in the middle third of your palate you can feel you can feel that nice sort of um, you can feel that sort of dry pastry, sort of spongy cakey sort of thing. That just blankets the middle of your palate there. Um, it does sweeten up a little bit later on. You can feel that there's a wee bit of a, um, how would you say, you can feel that there's a little bit of, I would say, you know, so it comes out, you know, it does get sweeter the further that you go into the aftertaste. It does get a wee bit more kind of, um, sort of icing sugary. You can feel it just like sweetening up a little bit in the middle of your palate there. So yeah, it feels like you've got the pastry kind of sitting there, you've got a little bit of spongy cake on sitting on top of it, and then just, you've got like a middle line that goes down the goes down your palate that's a bit darker then on the sides. It's got a wee bit more kind of sweetness to it in a sense actually, which um, which goes together nice. Mm. You get that wee bit of sweetness that comes out of it the further that you go into um, into the aftertaste. So yeah, this is definitely quite interesting. It is different to the other beers that we've had from this series before, come to think of it. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. very, quite, you know, really quite quirky in a sense, I have to say. Um, but yeah, if you go toward, that's the backbone of the beer in the middle third of your palate. But if you go towards that kind of border region between middle third and back third of your palate, um, it does have a little bit more of a kind of well-fired, toasty um, so yeah, it does have a wee bit more of a kind of well-fired, toasty sort of thing to it. It's almost got a wee bit of a kind of crusty cake sort of thing. If you think about a brownie on the um, 
a bit of brownie that gets stuck to the edge of the baking tray. It's got a wee bit of that in that border region between middle third and back third of your palate. Then on the back third of your tongue, there's a distinctly more kind of toasty, cakey element to this beer, which I really do like. Actually, I do like how um, I do like how this one um, goes together in a sense. So um, yeah, this this is a really interesting beer from a flavour point of view. I think it works it works strangely well actually. Um, it's just, as, as I was saying earlier, it's just not what I've expected. This beer has kind of caught me by surprise a little bit. Mm. But yeah, on the the back third of your palate, as, as I said, you can get a wee bit more, you do get a wee bit more kind of thickness to it. It does feel quite spongy and thick on that back third of your palate, but um, it does have a wee bit of dryness to it. As you move further forward though, you can feel the thickness just drop away. And then on top of that kind of pastry, um, you know, on top of that kind of pastry, spun soft, spongy note in the middle of the palate, towards the front, um, it does actually feel as if the beer has a wee tiny touch of like a licorice note coming out of it. Um, but then on top of that, it's quite, you know, on the front half of that middle third of your tongue, you can feel there's a wee bit of the vanilla in there, and then the nutty notes kind of feel as if they're quite infused into that, come to think of it. Um, yeah, the... I think that kind of describes the sort of malty side of the beer fairly well, to be honest with you, the malty adjuncty side of the beer. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this one for me, I think, is is quite interesting. As I say, it's definitely that, that sort of pastry malt base. I still, pardon me, I'm still to be convinced by it, in honesty, if, if um, you know, these... Um, if I think about the Amundsen beers, the big kind of thick and sweet and oily um, Imperial Stouts, I kind of prefer them. A little bit like that to be honest with you whereas you know these pastry bases in the sours and in the the stouts you know they're okay but i mean as i say if you gave me the choice of this beer compared to the last cake series beers that i had um from from brewski then i'd probably pick that i've had some other really nice and rounded very sweet imperial stouts from brewski that i've liked better than this as well come to think of it um but yeah i mean in terms of the pastry stout i think it does fit the style quite well actually but as i say just not if you compare this to the kind of big oaty and sweet stouts it's not quite as much my cup of tea as um as some of the other ones but is, is it a nice beer is it a nice pastry stout absolutely definitely and it's a solidly done beer from brewski which is what you've kind of come to expect from these guys um over the years so yeah um it does almost, it really does develop a wee bit of an almost licorice quality the more that you drink of it as well. So, yeah, you can feel there's a wee bit in the very centre of your palate, there's a wee bit of brown sugar in there. You definitely get the kind of caramel in there, but it comes across as like, it's almost like a kind of dark, almost like bourbony maple syrupy sort of thing. It's, it's quite a boozy brown sugar that you get in the middle of your palate there. But in the back corners of the palate, it's got a nice little bit of earthiness. As you move further forward, it develops a wee bit of a herbal character, and as you reach the kind of as you reach the kind of front corners of the tongue, it's got a really nice, um, it does have a very nice sort of um, little bit of a floral aromaticity there. I still can't tell whether there's hops in this one because it, this, the hoppies, the, the sides of your palate are very, very smooth in this. And as I say, the label's a bit confusing. So yeah. But yeah, around the front curve of the palate, it does feel as if it's a little bit lighter and grassy. And on that front third of your tongue, you are getting a little bit of fruitiness out of this beer. So, as I always say, on that front third of your palate, you get a nice little oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters roll their way out of the beer. If you go to the border region between front third and, and middle third of your palate, you can get, again, a bit of that kind of pastry, brownie. As it does come across as quite brownie-like in a way. Um, so you do get a nice little bit of a kind of brownie-type quality out of this beer. Um, like a sort of well-fired um just again it's like that bit of brownie that gets stuck to the the baking tray when you bring it out of the oven and then there's a wee bit of a kind of sweeter brownie um kind of forming the underneath of the the fruity side of the beer so on the fruity ester side of things yeah you get a really nice um you get a wee bit of raisiny sharpness when you take it in but the raisiny sharpness isn't overly kind of um it's not overly punchy, if that makes sense. You get a wee bit of a kind of figgy quality that comes out of the beer the further you go into it as well. And then on the front half of that um, 
from third year town there's a wee bit of a kind of black currenty uh, there's a wee bit more of a kind of yeah black currenty the slightly softer black currant than a more oily blackberry type quality coming out of this beer so from that perspective this beer is um is really quite interesting as well um yeah i do like i certainly like how this one is uh, is going together for sure this beer has um it's an interesting one as i say is it the best one i've had in the cake series so far not sure do i need to get a little bit more used to these kind of pastry stout bases potentially but as i say i'm a i'm maybe more of a fan of the big oaty you know the big thick oaty stouts rather than the slightly drier pastry stouts like this maybe that's the thing because obviously the sweet stouts that i've kind of become accustomed to would be the, the likes of the amundsen uh ones of course and you know the omnipoils and uh, and things like this so yeah this is an interesting beer for sure not quite what i expected it gives you all the different elements that you would um expect out of this one um it gives you you know the two it gives you the kind of nice nutty qualities it gives you a bit of the vanilla and it gives you some of the kind of brown sugar uh, from the caramel things that you expect as well so when they say it's a, an almond walnut vanilla caramel cake it certainly is that it does give you all of that in the kind of middle of the palate and um, it maybe could do i think this beer could do with a wee bit of more hoppy character to it just to balance it out a little bit more and that way it would give you a wee bit of a kind of fruity sweetness as well but then again um a cake like that it's not unless it's got berries and stuff on top of it then you know it's not going to have that and you can see on the artwork of the can and um, it's not got the berries on top of it so in a way it does make sense but yeah i would like a wee bit of hoppy and fruity character in this beer to be honest but that's just the way my tastes go different people like different things of course but yeah in terms of the mouthfeel then what would we say about this beer um Um, yeah, in terms of the mouthfeel, I would say that this beer, it's kind of at the bottom end of full bodied, carbonation is quite smooth, um, it does have a wee bit of thickness to it, and it's got a wee bit of slickness at the same time, it does feel a little bit boozy as well, you do get a wee bit of boozy warmth out of this beer, which for a 10% you know, is kind of normal to be honest. Um, so yeah, a wee bit of booziness out of the beer. Um, the malt base, like I say, and the adjunct, it's very oily and, you know, it's, it's obviously a long boil imperial stout, this one, which again is kind of what you'd expect from the style. But the, um, as I say, carbonation is very, very smooth. Um, there's very little, there, I would be very surprised if there's any IBU to this one, maybe 10 IBUs at the most. I, I don't think there's hops in this beer, to be honest with you. I, again, the label's a bit confusing, and you've just got a wee touch of a, an oily fruitiness to this beer as well. So, um, yeah, this has been a really interesting one to review, I have to say. Not quite what I expected from Brewski, as I've repeated a few times. But um, yeah, an interesting beer nonetheless. And I do look forward to seeing how the licorice cake... Um, how the licorice cake comes together maybe that one's going to be a little bit more kind of oily and things so we'll see about that but um yeah this was an interesting one this this was the almond walnut vanilla caramel cake coming in at 10 percent abv a pastry stout from brewski microbrewery in helsingbori here in skjona in the south of sweden so yeah let's leave it at that for this one once again thank you for watching my beer reviews until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual youtube stuff let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below let me know what your favorite beers are from brewski we will return to these guys fairly soon this month i have an ipa i've got one of the cake series uh, I've got another one of the cake series beers to review and i have one of the berlina vices from the pie series too so you'll see all of those reviewed over the next little while but yeah thank you for watching check out my social media check out brewski microbreakery and i'll catch you guys in the next one slanju skull cheers